Now here on the bench today is a uh, unusual Yagi that I came across on eBay and to be quite honest with you as soon as I saw this I clicked on it I knew I had to buy it uh, to take a look at here on this channel and what makes this unusual is the fact that it's fed with an element that you would normally find on uh, a panel antenna. Now this particular Yagi works uh, on quite a wide bandwidth, it works from uh, 2 GHz to 4 GHz but we'll find that out in a moment when we take it uh, over to the test bench to have a look at this but uh, it's really really unusual, I mean even the spacings between the elements, we've got this strange uh, elements here at the end, I'm not quite sure what they're doing at all. Um, the back reflector isn't grounded on uh, to the uh, Yagi at all. I mean, we've got uh, ground pins here, and we've just got a small piece of uh, copper PCB here that uh, it's soldered onto, uh, and all that's doing is adding some support to hold the connector in place there. So the back reflector isn't grounded in any way. But, uh, yeah, let's pop over to the test bench and see if it really does work from uh, 2 gigahertz up to 4 gigahertz. because if it does, it's something that we can definitely use in the future so here is the uh, little yagi on the test bench this is the setup then you've seen it many times before and i have to say it's looking very nice on the network analyzer here we are then on the network analyzer and we're scanning from 1700 megahertz over here all the way up to 4.3 gigahertz over here and we can see that basically apart from this dip here it is a pretty nice, uh, you know, quite a wide bandwidth Yagi antenna. Um, I've got the cursor on 2.1 there, but if we go to 2 gigahertz, which is there, um, effectively if this hump wasn't here and it was more level like it is in this area here, it would certainly work from 2 gigahertz, but we can follow the cursor down here, and here we're in the Wi-Fi spectrum, uh, 245, gigahertz there it's going to work really well if you just wanted to stick this on uh, an, an access point or something like that but uh, yeah we'll go along here and it's still working quite nicely we've got a bit of a hump there at 2.7 but then it goes back down again uh, almost 3 gigahertz there we'll keep following along and we come over here we're at 3.3 gigahertz which is uh, the first uh, spectrum of uh, 5G so it's uh, also a good little 5G Yagi but uh, we'll go along 3.6 3.7 again that's the second band for 5G again really really nice and then we get all the way up to 3.8 gigahertz and then it starts going out of band there so I would say that you know <clears throat> we see claims from these uh, antennas on eBay sometimes and uh, we can take it with a grain of salt but this time uh, the seller claiming that it works from 2 gigahertz all the way up to uh, 4 gigahertz it does it works really well the only uh, little uh, thing against it is this uh, first bump in the road here but uh, apart from that it's really nice now as you saw on the uh, network analyzer very very nice and apart from that one peak uh, pretty level all the way through uh, the you know the uh, RF range there from 2 gigahertz all the way up to 4 gigahertz and as I said in that video this um, you can class this as a 5g Yagi antenna I mean you're only going to hit the uh, higher frequencies of the 5g I mean the 5g is a, a combined frequency with the lower frequencies as well um, look look very very similar to the uh, 4g um, 4G incorporates everything before it, plus you get uh, the higher frequencies around uh, 2.7 gigahertz to get that speed that's associated with the 4G. And the 5G is exactly the same. You've got the uh, two, three gigahertz frequencies, as well as all the frequencies that came before that, all clubbed together. And uh, I have seen. Uh, antennas that aren't as responsive at those higher 5g frequencies than this i mean i wasn't expecting it to uh, cover the full range but as i said apart from that uh, small peak it uh, certainly does it's very very nice
Now I have got a lot of uh, unanswered questions that at this moment in time I can't answer that are intriguing and one of the things that uh, drew me into this uh, little Yagi when I saw it and I clicked on it straight away. By the way I paid uh, £8 free shipping for this on eBay. I'll put a link in the description but he uh, is only getting small stock amounts um, is going out of stock all the time and he's only i think at the moment he's only got two available um this is available on um, banggood and alibaba but the sellers on there are asking uh, double they want to, to around 20 22 pounds for this but uh, as i say i'll put a link in the description you can do your own search in your country on ebay you might have better luck but um the things that intrigue me with this is, well, the first thing is the fact that this is a patch antenna feeding the Yagi. You don't normally see that. Normally, 9 out of 10 times, it's uh, a folded dipole of some description. But uh, this is interesting. Um, the second question I've got with this Yagi is, uh, would this be more efficient if it was facing that way? So let's say... Uh, you know we had the PCB here and we cut out the slot and uh, we slotted in a little uh, in fact let me get something here hang on so I've got a small piece of PCB here and what I'm trying to say is if uh, this wasn't etched on here I mean we can etch the rest of it onto a piece of PCB but we cut a slot out so that uh, this little uh, patch antenna here was facing in that direction instead so it would separate from the PCB um, would that work better and logic on you know my knowledge at this moment in time suggests that it would work better than having it flat like this um, having that like that let's say but um, that's something uh, that we can test and uh, hopefully uh, you know you'll see that in a uh, future video uh, the other question I've got with this is exactly what these elements here uh, what kind of role they're playing on the end there I'm not quite sure I mean the the parasitic elements tend to always be shorter so slightly shorter than the main driven element on a Yagi these um, are the same length as the uh, patch antenna itself so patch antenna is it's 23.5 millimeters and these are also 23.5 millimeters and if you have a look at the parasitic elements parasitic elements are slightly shorter um i've made a pdf of this and i think off the top of my head they they were about uh, 22 millimeters but don't quote me on that but because they're the same size as the main driven element i'm not sure what role these are playing i mean maybe you know there's some uh, yagi aficionados out there have said on multiple videos for a long long time i wasn't particularly interested in yagis it's only recently that uh, i've become interested in them so there's a lot of questions to answer with this and the other thing that intrigues me as well is for a long time i've always been on the lookout for a yagi that will work well inside a cantenna now you have seen me on this channel play around uh, with yagis in a cantenna i mean i made uh, a video probably seven years ago now yagi in a can the original one and uh, some designs work better inside uh, a uh, waveguide than others and i'm kind of thinking you know well i'm interested in what this particular design would work like inside a uh, cantenna and from what we've learnt in the past um i think this would probably work really well inside a can so that's another thing that uh, i want to check out in future with this particular design but for now i have made a uh, pdf of the artwork for you to download um if you want to know the measurements then you can measure the measurements on here with a pair of calipers well this is the artwork if you wanted to etch this out for yourself on uh, pcb let's say to have a play around with if you can't get hold of these i mean uh, i wouldn't definitely not pay the uh, 20 pounds plus that uh, some of the sellers are asking for this and also on ebay at the minute is a seller asking 30 pounds for one of these but if you can pick one up for around eight pounds just to have a play around with then uh, it's certainly you know it's a nice little yagi and it's a nice little yagi to have um 
with your uh, RF setup and uh, as I say I want to play around with this one of the things I want to do first though is to see if we can take this design and make it for Wi-Fi at 2.4 gigahertz that I think that would be a nice starting point to try and understand the design of this Yagi and uh, I'm, I'm going to shoot a uh, future video around this uh, particular design but we're going to have a go at rapid prototyping with uh, uh, what we've got now with copper tape onto uh, PCB rapid prototyping so we can make small adjustments as we go along with uh, the output on the network analyzer so yeah it's it's an interesting design and uh, if you have any uh, ideas about the company RF enthusiasts I've had a, a bit of a search on Google I can't find anything regarding them but if they have got a website especially if they've got a forum as well um, you know please let us know in the comments so hopefully uh, you enjoyed this video just a quick little video taking a look at this particular antenna that I've picked up a lot of questions and uh, there certainly will be future videos around this particular design if you know anything about this particular design as always please let us know in the comments um, you know if you know uh, some of the fundamentals about this how it's actually radiating along the parasitic elements uh, you know as it does because normally uh, you would see a patch antenna uh, radiating in this direction and if it hasn't got a uh, back reflector it would radiate out the back as well not in this direction so much so that's what's kind of uh, got me intrigued whether we can twist this around so it's facing that way whether we'd get some more gain out of this whether it'd be you know a, a lot better design in the long run but uh, yeah if you enjoy this video please give it a thumbs up comments and questions drop them below and i'll do my best to answer them and uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one